Welcome and congratulations on your pregnancy. This is an exciting time for you and your family, but with the excitement can come questions and concerns about the health of your developing pregnancy. This virtual genetic counseling session has been created to help answer some of your questions and outline your options in prenatal testing so you and your healthcare provider can make the choices that are right for you. This video is not intended to replace an actual genetic counselor session, but rather it is meant as an educational tool to help you along your journey. Most babies are born healthy. However, we know that as many as one in every 33 babies can be born with a birth defect. Most of these birth defects actually have nothing to do with anything that you or the father of the baby did or did not do before or during pregnancy. Most happen just by chance during the fertilization process. There are certain factors that might indicate that you have a higher or a lower chance for having a child with certain types of birth defects. Things like mom or dad's age during the pregnancy, or your family history or your pregnancy history, can tell us if there may be a higher chance for certain conditions in your particular pregnancy. One of the more common types of birth defects that can be seen during pregnancy is called a chromosome condition. The chromosomes are the structures in the body that carry our genetic information. Inside each of the cells of the body, we have 46 chromosomes arranged into 23 pairs. The first 22 pairs are numbered 1 through 22 and are the same in men and women. The final pair is the sex chromosomes, which determine gender. Females usually have two X chromosomes, and males usually have an X and a Y chromosome. A change in the number of chromosomes can lead to differences in development. Some people are interested in having information about whether or not certain birth defects may be present in their pregnancy, while other people are not interested in this information. The reassurance of knowing earlier on in pregnancy can help women to plan and prepare and also have discussions with your physician regarding your pregnancy management. There are a variety of prenatal testing options available to help a woman learn more about her chance of having a pregnancy with a chromosomal condition. These tests fall into two broad categories, screening tests and diagnostic tests. A screening test is an ultrasound, a blood test, or a combination of both that can tell us if there's a higher or lower chance for certain conditions in your pregnancy. Because it's just ultrasound or a blood test, there's no risk to you or to the pregnancy with a screening test. However, we also know that screening tests will not provide definitive answers. They won't tell us for sure if these conditions are present or not in the pregnancy. Most screening tests will not look for all birth defects or all chromosome conditions in the pregnancy, but most will look for an increased risk for Down syndrome, trisomy 18, and sometimes trisomy 13. Some screening tests might also give information regarding the development of the spine or certain rare genetic conditions in the pregnancy. Some screening tests will be performed in the first trimester and some in the second trimester. Your healthcare provider will be able to review with you what particular screening options would be available to you during pregnancy. It's important to remember that a screen positive result does not indicate that the pregnancy is definitively affected. In fact, about 1 in 20 women will receive a screen positive result from traditional screening, and the vast majority of the time the pregnancy is actually unaffected. Conversely, a negative result cannot completely exclude the possibility for these conditions in your pregnancy. In fact, as many as 10 to 20 percent of affected pregnancies will receive a negative result with traditional screening tests. The diagnostic tests allow us to sample from the pregnancy and analyze the chromosomes completely. This allows us to exclude over 99 percent of all chromosome conditions that could be present in the pregnancy. The most common diagnostic tests are CVS, or chorionic villus sampling, and amnio, or amniocentesis. The CVS is usually performed in the first trimester of pregnancy and involves sampling from the placenta. The amniocentesis is usually performed in the second trimester of pregnancy and involves sampling the fluid in the amniotic sac. Either method allows us to analyze the chromosomes, and either method may allow us to perform additional tests that might be necessary based on your family or pregnancy history. Even with normal chromosome results, it's important to remember that we cannot exclude all birth defects and all genetic conditions. Finally, each of these diagnostic procedures is associated with a small but very real risk for miscarriage. CVS is associated with a risk of miscarriage of around 1% or 1 in 100. Amniocentesis is associated with a risk of miscarriage of about half of a percent or 1 in 200. 
a newer, more advanced screening option called Non-Invasive Prenatal Testing, or NIPT, is now available. Scientists have figured out how to use cell-free DNA in a mother's blood to test for certain chromosome conditions in her pregnancy. Cell-free DNA are small pieces of DNA floating in the bloodstream. Everyone has cell-free DNA in their blood. In a pregnant woman's blood, she has both her own cell-free DNA and the cell-free DNA from her pregnancy. After a pregnant woman's blood is drawn, the amount of cell-free DNA coming from each chromosome is counted. If there is more or less cell-free DNA from a certain chromosome than expected, it is very likely that the extra or missing amount comes from the pregnancy. For many women, non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, represents a significant step forward in their screening options. In fact, one such test, the Verify Prenatal Test, takes an especially stringent approach to the science of genetic testing and prenatal screening. Using an advanced technology called Massively Parallel Sequencing, the Verify test can analyze millions of DNA fragments per blood sample. And with the help of its optimized algorithm, it can accurately determine if there are too many or too few copies of various chromosomes in your pregnancy. The Verify prenatal test can detect trisomies 21, 18, and 13 in both singleton and twin gestations. Trisomy 21 is also called Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome tend to have a very characteristic facial appearance and some degree of intellectual disability, usually mild to moderate. They may require supervision throughout their lives. However, many people with Down syndrome are increasingly attending school and holding jobs. People with Down syndrome do have a higher risk for certain medical conditions, but many of these are treatable, and many individuals with Down syndrome live healthy lives into their 50s and 60s. Trisomy 18 and trisomy 13 lead to medical complications that can be life-threatening. Many pregnancies with trisomy 18 or 13 will end in stillbirth, miscarriage, or neonatal death. Less than 10% of children with either of these conditions will survive beyond their first year of life, but some may live years or even decades. Those that do survive do have a higher chance for severe intellectual disability and physical birth defects. For singleton gestations, the Verify prenatal test also provides the option of testing for an extra or missing X or Y chromosome. A change in the number of sex chromosomes may not be apparent at birth, but can be associated with a higher chance for developmental delay, behavioral issues, or infertility. While other screening options may require multiple office visits, multiple blood draws, and ultrasound, the Verify prenatal test is much more convenient. The Verify prenatal test is performed from a single tube of mother's blood drawn as early as 10 weeks in the pregnancy. The results of your Verify prenatal test will be returned to your healthcare provider who ordered the test. In most cases, the results will be no aneuploidy detected. This means that there was no evidence of any extra chromosomal material in the result and can be reassuring that a chromosome condition is most likely not present in your pregnancy. In some cases, the results will come back aneuploidy detected. This means that there was evidence for extra chromosomal material and is consistent with a chromosome condition in the pregnancy. In very rare cases, the results will return aneuploidy suspected borderline value. This indicates that there is an increased chance for a chromosome condition in the pregnancy. The Verify prenatal test is much more accurate than traditional screening options. If a pregnancy is affected with Down syndrome, the Verify prenatal test will return aneuploidy detected or aneuploidy suspected over 99.9% .9 of the time. Conversely, if a pregnancy is unaffected, the Verify prenatal test report will indicate no aneuploidy detected over 99% of the time. Because of the high accuracy of the Verify prenatal test, it is an excellent option for pregnant women who are interested in learning more about the chance for certain chromosomal conditions in their pregnancy. The Verify prenatal test does not screen for all birth defects or genetic conditions that may be present in a pregnancy. Based on your specific history, your healthcare provider may recommend additional testing options for you. A no aneuploidy detected result does not guarantee a healthy birth. All of the options discussed in this video are voluntary. Some women may choose to decline all of these options. Other women may choose to proceed with either screening or diagnostic testing. So how do you know if the Verify prenatal test might be right for you? 
First, you must have a confirmed singleton or twin pregnancy of at least 10 weeks gestational age. You may also have to meet at least one of the following criteria. You will be 35 years or older at the time of your delivery, or 32 years or older for a twin pregnancy. You have had a positive result on a different screening test. Your ultrasound causes increased concern for a chromosomal condition. You have a history of a chromosomal condition in a previous pregnancy or in your family. However, your health care provider can discuss with you whether you are an appropriate candidate for the Verify test. Women who are not considered at increased risk should speak with their health care provider about which tests might be appropriate for them to consider during their pregnancy. This simple flowchart can serve as a guide for you and your doctor in deciding when and where the Verify test may fit into your prenatal testing. Typically, a positive or suspicious result on traditional serum screening would call for further investigation, either through additional screening with NIPT, such as the Verify test, or more invasive diagnostic testing with CVS or Amnio. By electing to go with the less invasive NIPT option first, you can potentially get the answers and reassurance you're seeking about the chromosomal health of your pregnancy without the added risk and expense of more invasive procedures. The results of your Verify prenatal test will be available to your healthcare provider in about one week. Your healthcare provider can review your results with you in the context of your clinical history. In the case of an aneuploidy detected or aneuploidy suspected result, Further testing, such as CVS or amniocentesis, should be considered if definitive diagnosis is desired. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about your prenatal testing options. We recommend that a woman discuss all of her testing options with her health care provider to help decide which type of testing, if any, is best for her and her pregnancy. We urge you to talk to your doctor about NIPT or the Verify prenatal test specifically if you feel it may be right for you. Again, please accept our congratulations on this exciting phase of your life.